There's a well build I've been using for a while now. It's strong, it's fun, and I think it's one of the best. It has about five different layers, different ways to run it. You can go damage, you can go super, crowd control, activities like override, dares, and more. It's great. And I'm probably going to be using it a lot during the Witch Queen campaign. Of course, I'm going to dig into Void 3.0. This is so good. It's so fun. But as you get into harder content with this, there are some things that you can do I'm going to go over. With the harder content, usually specific builds are going to be made. Ursa, Phoenix, Omni, Oculus, you get it. But today, I want to explore and show you some of the things with the Insurmountable Skull and some things with well mods and stacking damage that you may not know about. It's a strong setup. Before I do, I want to give a huge shout out to a sponsor of the channel for the past 15 months or so, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark encrypts your data, it keeps it safe. It's an extra layer of security for your photos, your videos, all your personal stuff so no one can see it. It hides your true IP address. It's extremely easy to use. And my favorite thing is that it's the only privacy product that allows unlimited simultaneous devices. Most of them limit you, but not Surfshark. You can have it on your phone, your desktop, as many devices as you want. It works as an app or browser extension. It allows you to place your phone or laptop anywhere in the world. Let's take HBO Max. It isn't available in some countries, so you just change your location and it's gonna open up. And for Netflix, there are about 15 different Netflix libraries out there to go out and explore. Floor. So with changing your location to different areas, you can see what's playing around the world. When it comes to gaming, you can game in full privacy and security. That includes big ones like hiding your IP in Discord and other chats, not having to worry about it. You can also prevent ISP throttling from your provider and actually get faster speeds than what they're capping you at. Protection is key. Use my code COOLGUY to get 83% off plus three extra months free. There's a link down below right at the top of the description. And if for whatever reason you're unhappy, they do back a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk to try it out for yourself. I love this VPN. I've used it for more than a year, and I really hope you guys get behind Surfshark as they've gotten behind me. It's a really good deal that they have for us. This helmet right here, I believe, is one of the best in the game for what it does. Transfusion Matrix. Kills with arc melee abilities, trigger health regeneration, and restore melee energy. Usually players think about shoulder charge when they think of the skull, and it's okay with shoulder charge, but the other trees have a little bit more value. Like in the Crucible, you can do the shotgun body, follow through with the shoulder charge, and where the insurmountable comes in, it allows you to restore the melee energy. That's the only way to do it right now, is to prime them before, otherwise you need the Greaves. The other is one of my favorite ways to run Bottom Tree Striker, like ever, is to abuse Bottom Tree Frontal Assault, because with this helmet, after the melee final blow, you have Knockout, you have the Lunge Range. After you do it, you're gonna get the melee charge right back. It's incredible. I've talked about this before in a couple videos, but there's another, and I actually talked about this recently to a couple close friends, and they had no idea that you could do this. With this much ease and this much power, is to use the skull with middle tree, and then we're about to add to it, it's special. With middle tree, you have a lot covered in PVE. It's one of the best PVE supers with Thunder Crash, and if an activity allows you to switch, you could switch off of the skull to the Crest of Falling Star for more damage with Thunder Crash. But the interaction with the skull and Code of the Missile Ballistic Slam is beautiful. After you hit the ground, get a kill. The skull is going to allow you to keep doing it. It's going to restore that melee charge. You can just keep doing it over and over. The helmet also triggers health regeneration. It also procs inertia override. Because Impact Conversion states that hitting targets with the slam grants super energy and activates inertia override. There's a lot of stacking things that you can do over and over. Every time that you land and you get the 20% damage bonus with inertia, then you start stacking from there. That's just out of the gate. I'm going to cover a lot of weapons and well setups. There's a lot to explore here. And on the fly, you can change them to what you want, what you need. And I first want to start with three core mods that I love using this setup with. One of them, every single video that I have this mod included, it gets a lot of questions as to why I use it. I'm going to clear that up. Two mods for the slam are going to be Melee Wellmaker and Explosive Wellmaker. Melee Wellmaker, Powered Melee Combatant Final Blows, Spawn Elemental Wells, Matching Your Subclass Energy Type, so Arc. Explosive Wellmaker, Rapidly Defeating Combatants with Explosive Damage, Spawns a Solar Elemental Well. Explosive Wellmaker can also spawn wells with, like, let's say, a Breach Load grenade launcher from those explosions. But with the Ballistic Slam, it's going to spawn an Arc Well, a Solar Well with these two mods on, but I pair those with Bountiful Wells. Bountiful Wells states that Elemental Well mods that cause you to spawn Elemental Wells can now stack, spawning additional wells for each additional copy of the mods that you have. Why I use Bountiful Wells is for a couple reasons. Number one, you do not need multiple of the same mod. It says spawning additional wells for each additional copy. What it actually does is it doubles the well generation from a single mod. Meaning that with this setup, with Bountiful Wells, instead of getting one and one, you now get two arc wells and two solar wells. So that's four total wells. And you're gonna be doing this a lot. The second reason as to why is conserving energy cost. Bang for your buck. This is two energy on a solar armor piece and it's doubling my wells to my main goal. So at this point, you slam, you get super energy, you get four wells, you get health regeneration, you get inertia override. Now it's about what to do with the remaining two mod slots you have on your armor, the wells created, and then the weapons. And that's where the fun begins. This is where you have access to a lot of powerful things. 
I first want to start with the super build, and I haven't even talked about weapons. There are great weapons to use with this, but for the super build, it's crazy. You get Thunder Crash going, and again, you can switch to the Falling Star once you have your super. You want 100 intellect on an arc helmet, double hands on. Gain bonus super energy from melee kills. If you're running a little bit higher content, you're gonna run just one of them, that way you can have finders on, then font of wisdom. Pick up an elemental well, matching your subclass, so in our case, arc. It's gonna grant a temporary significant increase in the intellect, improving the recharge rate of the super. And bonus, throw on a thrash weapon. All you need to do is the slam. You have the slam giving super energy, double hands on giving super energy, and then the wisdom scaler. And high density activities, like I like to show altars for a lot of this. But think about dares, whatever Witch Queen activity comes up, even in the Witch Queen campaign, all you do is slam over and over. As long as you get a kill with that slam, the helmet's going to give you the melee charge back. You have inertia for 20% more weapon damage, and then you have a thresh weapon too, if you want. You're looking good. A fast super, a very fast super, and it's just combining what you have with the tree and the mods. Then you can add in things like Well of Ions, that's an arc mod. Well of Ion states that picking up an Arc Elemental Well causes your next melee to deal increased damage, so you can just add it on here and every other Ballistic Slam is going to do more damage. Or you can have something like a 1-2 Punch Shotgun. Inertia gives 20% more damage to the pellets, then the melee is going to have 1-2 Punch plus the bonus melee damage from Well of Ions. You have a lot covered. That's for your Yellow Bars, Ultras, and Majors. You also have access to Solar Arc Wells after creating that Slam. So you can have the passive ones like Fonts of Might for more damage, Wisdom for the Super. Now for the ad clear setup, this also gets into hard hitting weapons and hard hitting special weapons. The best hands down is going to be Trinity Ghoul. Wrist Runner is going to be good, but the Ballistic Slam counts as an art kill, meaning that the Lightning Rod is going to be there for Trinity Ghoul. You just slam and clear, that's all it is, all day. Say you add in Font of Might. You're creating an arc well, so when you pick it up, your arc weapon is going to be doing more damage. Big stacking can occur with this. So if you're using an arc weapon, it's worth it because you're also getting inertia. Like, let's take this finite impactor, it does 5,857 at base. With inertia, 7,028. That's the 20% more damage, but inertia with font is 8,785. 50% more. Or maybe you have a swashbuckler weapon, like this Geon 7. Slam with the swashbuckler weapon, and it takes the base 1,400 per bullet, all the way to 3,236 per bullet. Because after that slam, you have times 5 swashbuckler, inertia override, font of might. Big damage. And it gets even better with something like a swashbuckler matador. That thing with Swashbuckler, Inertia, and Font is crazy. Like this one right here is Lead from Gold, Swashbuckler, Assault Mag, Full Choke. It's great. Or maybe the Golden Tricorn Matador. That can get some use with this. Because you're going to get a kill with the Shotgun. When you Ballistic Slam, you're at times 2. At times 2, the Matador does 50% more damage. Then you add on Font of Might. And it's going to last for 10 seconds, but you can keep slamming over and over and keep refreshing the timer. It's going to be up as long as you want it up or until you run out of ammo. There's a lot you can do with weapons. Again, maybe 1-2 Punch. Paired with Will of Ions for more melee damage, maybe Swashbuckler, Vorpal. You can add clear with Risk Runner, Trinity Ghoul. It's very good. After this last little section here, I'm going to go into a little mod overview on how I like to run it. I encourage you to build craft and go from there. For a little bit higher content, there's also an option to add in blinding grenades on a breach load grenade launcher. They can't melt what they can't see. So you'd blind the area, ballistic slam on in. It can work. This goes for any content, really. Just blind the area, yeet on in. It's fun. With the core mods, I personally have found that it does flow through Bountiful Wells, Melee, and Explosive Well Maker. Because that one act of a ballistic slam has so much going for it with those three things. Because you have the tree, the helmet, you have four wells, health regeneration, more damage, the melee back. Now, the other two armor spots, you can sub in even a solar well mod if you wanted to because you have Explosive Well Maker. You're going to be creating them. So it could be Ordnance for Grenade, Well of Life for the increased regeneration, whatever you want. Or go into the Arc Wells. Well of Ions, we've talked about it, for every other melee doing more damage. Maybe pair that with a 1-2 Punch Shotgun on the side. Well of Striking for melee energy when you accidentally miss a slam. You can do Seeking Wells, so you just don't have to worry about it. They're going to come straight to you after you slam. Or you can actually do the last two with Charge with Light. You have Elemental Charge, you can slam down, you're going to have an Arc Well, that's going to give you two charges with light. Then you would choose a mod to spend those on. It could be Protective Light. Lucent Blade, any charge mod that you want. But I have found just running those three mods, it's kind of like the pathway, the flow of it all. You can do it however you want, because wells in general give boost to abilities. When you create the arc ones, you get more. You can go all super, you can go all ad clear, you can do more damage, you can mix and match. I encourage you to play around with it, it's very powerful. Mainly though, it's fun, it's very fun. I personally run high intellect, Thunder Crash is a pretty fast super. I switch to Falling Star. Then the other two mods, I switch between Elemental Charge and Protective Light, because once you're charged with light, there's nothing to spin it on. The only thing that happens is that 
when you're low, it helps keep you alive. Or I kind of go into Font of Might with a Swashbuckler weapon, pairing that damage with Font plus Inertia, it does well. So the next time you're in dares or when new activities come around, remember this, it's one of the best. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about this down below. What build can you come up with? Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.